Ismailism Arabic, Alazmailid al ism iliya, Persian, Asmalian Sindhi, Asmaili esm iliyan are a branch of Shia Islam. The ism ili get their name from their acceptance of Imam Ismail ibn Jafar as the appointed spiritual successor Imam to Jafar al Sadiq, wherein they differ from the Twelvers who accept Musa al Qadim, younger brother of Ismail, as the true Imam. Ismailism rose at one point to become the largest branch of Shiism, climaxing as a political power with the Fatimid Caliphate in the 10th through 12th centuries. Ismailis believe in the oneness of God, as well as the closing of divine revelation with Muhammad, whom they see as the final prophet and messenger of God to all humanity. The Ism Ili and the Twelvers both accept the same initial Imams. After the death of Muhammad ibn Ismail in the 8th century CE, the teachings of Ismailism further transformed into the belief system as it is known today, with an explicit concentration on the deeper, esoteric meaning of the Islamic religion. With the eventual development of Twelverism into the more literalistic Zahir oriented Akbari and later Usuli schools of thought, Shi'i Islam developed into two separate directions, the metaphorical Ismaili group focusing on the mystical path and nature of God, with the Imam of the time representing the manifestation of esoteric truth and intelligible reality, with the more literalistic Twelver group focusing on divine law sharia and the deeds and sayings sunnah of Muhammad and the Twelve Imams who were guides and a light to God. Ismaili thought is heavily influenced by Neoplatonism, though there are several paths tariqat within Ismailism. The term in today's vernacular generally refers to the Nazaris, who recognize Aga Khan IV as the 49th hereditary Imam and are the largest Ismaili group. In recent centuries Ism Ilis have largely been a Pakistani and Indian community, but Ismailis are also found in Bangladesh, Malaysia, Syria, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Jordan, Iraq, East Africa, Angola, Lebanon, and South Africa, and have in recent years emigrated to Europe, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, and Trinidad and Tobago. There are also a significant number of Ism Ilis in Central Asia. History Topic. Succession crisis Ismailism shares its beginnings with other early Shi'i sects that emerged during the succession crisis that spread throughout the early Muslim community. From the beginning, the Shia asserted the right of Ali, cousin of Muhammad, to have both political and spiritual control over the community. This also included his two sons, who were the grandsons of Muhammad through his daughter Fatima. The conflict remained relatively peaceful between the partisans of Ali and those who asserted a semi democratic system of electing caliphs, until the third of the Rashidun caliphs, Uthman, was killed, and Ali, with popular support, ascended to the caliphate. Soon after his ascendancy, Aisha, the third of the Prophet's wives, claimed along with Uthman's tribe, the Umayyads, that Ali should take keezes blood for blood from the people responsible for Uthman's death. Ali voted against it as he believed that situation at that time demanded a peaceful resolution of the matter. Both parties could rightfully defend their claims, but due to escalated misunderstandings, the Battle of the Camel was fought and Aisha was defeated but was respectfully escorted to Medina by Ali. Following this battle, Muawiyah, the Umayyad governor of Syria, also staged a revolt under the same pretenses. Ali led his forces against Muawiyah until the side of Muawiyah held copies of the Quran against their spears and demanded that the issue be decided by Islam's holy book. Ali accepted this, and an arbitration was done which ended in his favor. A group among Ali's army believed that subjecting his legitimate authority to arbitration was tantamount to apostasy, and abandoned his forces. This group was known as the Kawarij and Ali wished to defeat their forces before they reached the cities where they would be able to blend in with the rest of the population. While he was unable to do this, he nonetheless defeated their forces in subsequent battles. Regardless of these defeats, the Qarijites survived and became a violently problematic group in Islamic history. After plotting an assassination against Ali, Muawiyah, and the arbitrator of their conflict, only Ali was successfully assassinated in 661 CE, and the imamate passed on to his son Hassan and then later his son Husayn, or according to the Nazari Ism Ili, the imamate passed temporarily to Hassan, who was an entrusted imam al -imam al and afterwards to Husayn who was the permanent imam al -imam al the entrusted imam is an imam in the full sense except that the lineage of the imamate must continue through the permanent imam. However, the political caliphate was soon taken over by Muawiyah, the only leader in the empire at that time with an army large enough to seize control. Even some of Ali's early followers regarded him as 
an absolute and divinely guided leader who could demand of them the same kind of loyalty that would have been expected for the Prophet." For example, one of Ali's supporters who also was devoted to the Prophet said to him, "'Our opinion is your opinion and we are in the palm of your right hand.'" The early followers of Ali seem to have taken his guidance as "'right guidance' deriving from divine support. In other words, Ali's guidance was seen to be the expression of God's will and the Quranic message. This spiritual and absolute authority of Ali was known as Walaya and it was inherited by his successors, the Imams. In the first century after the Prophet, the term Sunnah was not specifically defined as Sunnah of the Prophet, but was used in connection to Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and some Umayyad caliphs. The idea of Hadith or traditions ascribed to the Prophet was not mainstream nor was Hadith criticism. Even the earliest legal texts by Malik b. Anas and Abu Hanifa employ many methods including analogical reasoning and opinion and do not rely exclusively on hadith. Only in the 2nd century does the Sunni jurist al-Shafi'i first argue that only the sunnah of the Prophet should be a source of law and that this sunnah is embodied in hadiths. It would take another 100 years after al-Shafi'i for Sunni Muslim jurists to fully base their methodologies on prophetic hadiths. Meanwhile, Imam Shia Muslims followed the Imam's interpretations of Islam as normative without any need for hadiths and other sources of Sunni law such as analogy and opinion. Karbala and afterward The Battle of Karbala After the death of Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein and his family were increasingly worried about the religious and political persecution that was becoming commonplace under the reign of Muawiyah's son, Yazid. Amidst this turmoil in 680, Hussein along with the women and children of his family, upon receiving invitational letters and gestures of support by Kufis, wished to go to Kufa and confront Yazid as an intercessor on part of the citizens of the empire. However, he was stopped by Yazid's army in Karbala during the month of Muharram. His family was starved and deprived of water and supplies, until eventually the army came in on the tenth day and martyred Hussein and his companions, and enslaved the rest of the women and family, taking them to Kufa. This battle would become extremely important to the Shi'i psyche. The Twelvers as well as Mustali Ism Ili still mourn this event during an occasion known as Ashura. The Nazari Ism Ili, however, do not mourn this in the same way because of the belief that the light of the Imam never dies but rather passes on to the succeeding Imam, making mourning arbitrary. However, during commemoration they do not have any celebrations in Jamatkana during Muharram and may have announcements or sessions regarding the tragic events of Karbala. Also individuals may observe Muharram in a wide variety of ways. This respect for Muharram does not include self-flagellation and beating because they feel that harming one's body is harming a gift from Allah. Topic: The beginnings of Ism Ili Dawa. After being set free by Yazid, Zainab bint Ali, the daughter of Fatima and Ali and the sister of Hassan and Hussein, started to spread the word of Karbala to the Muslim world, making speeches regarding the event. This was the first organized dawah of the Shia, which would later develop into an extremely spiritual institution for the Ism Ilis. After the poisoning of Ali ibn Husayn Zayn al-Abidin by Hisham ibn Abd al-Malik in 713, Shi'ism's first succession crisis arose with Zayd ibn Ali's companions and the Zaydis who claimed Zayd ibn Ali as the Imam, whilst the rest of the Shia upheld Muhammad al-Bakir as the Imam. The Zaydis argued that any Sayyid or descendant of Muhammad through Hassan or Husayn, who rebelled against tyranny and the injustice of his age could be the imam. The Zaydis created the first Shi'i states in Iran, Iraq and Yemen. In contrast to his predecessors, Muhammad al-Bakir focused on academic Islamic scholarship in Medina, where he promulgated his teachings to many Muslims, both Shia and non-Shia, in an extremely organized form of dawah. In fact, the earliest text of the Ismaili school of thought is said to be the Umm al-Khattab, the archetypal book, a conversation between Muhammad al-Bakir and three of his disciples. This tradition would pass on to his son, Jafar al-Sadiq, who inherited the imamate on his father's death in 743. Jafar al-Sadiq excelled in the scholarship of the day and had many pupils, including three of the four founders of the Sunni Madhabs. However, following al-Sadiq's poisoning in 765, a fundamental split occurred in the community. 
Ismail ibn Jafar, who at one point was appointed by his father as the next imam, appeared to have predeceased his father in 755. While Twelvers argue that either he was never heir apparent or he truly predeceased his father and hence Musa al Qadim was the true heir to the imamate, the Ism Illis argue that either the death of Ismail was staged in order to protect him from Abbasid persecution or that the imamate passed to Muhammad ibn Ismail in lineal descent. Ascension of the dais For some partisans of Ism il, the imamate ended with Ism il ibn Jafar. Most Ismailis recognized Muhammad ibn Ismail as the next imam and some saw him as the expected Mahdi that Jafar al-Sadiq had preached about. However, at this point the Ism Ili Imams according to the Nizari and Mustali found areas where they would be able to be safe from the recently founded Abbasid Caliphate, which had defeated and seized control from the Umayyads in 750 CE. At this point, some of the Ismaili community believed that Muhammad ibn Ismail had gone into the occultation and that he would one day return. A small group traced the Imamate among Muhammad ibn Ismail's lineal descendants. With the status and location of the imams not known to the community, the concealed Ismaili imams began to propagate the faith through Diyan from its base in Syria. This was the start of the spiritual beginnings of the Dawah that would later play important parts in the all Ismaili branches, especially the Nizaris and the Mastalis. The Dai was not a missionary in the typical sense, and he was responsible for both the conversion of his student as well as the mental and spiritual well being. The Dai was a guide and light to the imam. The teacher-student relationship of the da'i and his student was much like the one that would develop in Sufism. The student desired God, and the da'i could bring him to God by making him recognize the imam, who possesses the knowledge of the oneness of God. The da'i and imam were respectively the spiritual mother and spiritual father of the Ismaili believers. Jafar bin Mansur al Yaman's The Book of the Sage and Disciple is a classic of early Fatimid literature, documenting important aspects of the development of the Ismaili dawah in 10th century Yemen. The book is also of considerable historical value for modern scholars of Arabic prose literature as well as those interested in the relationship of esoteric Shiism with early Islamic mysticism. Likewise is the book an important source of information regarding the various movements within 10th century Shiism leading to the spread of the Fatimid Ismaili Dawah throughout the medieval Islamicate world, and the religious and philosophical history of post-Fatimid Mastai branch of Ismailism in Yemen and India. Shams Tabrizi and Rumi is a famous example of the importance of the relationship between the guide and the guided, and Rumi dedicated much of his literature to Shams Tabrizi and his discovery of the truth. The Karmatians While many of the Ism Ili were content with the Dai teachings, a group that mingled Persian nationalism and Zoroastrianism surfaced known as the Karmatians. With their headquarters in Bahrain, they accepted a young Persian former prisoner by the name of Abul Fadl al-Isfahani, who claimed to be the descendant of the Persian kings as their Mahdi, and rampaged across the Middle East in the 10th century, climaxing their violent campaign by stealing the Black Stone from the Kaaba in Mecca in 930 under Abu Tahir al-Janabi. Following the arrival of the al-Isfahani, they changed their Qibla from the Kaaba in Mecca to the Zoroastrian-influenced fire. After their return of the Black Stone in 951 and a defeat by the Abbasids in 976 the group slowly dwindled off and no longer has any adherents. The Fatimid Caliphate Rise of the Fatimid Caliphate The political asceticism practiced by the Imams during the period after Muhammad ibn Ismail was to be short lived and finally concluded with the Imamate of Abdullah al Mahdi Billah, who was born in 873. After decades of Ism Ilis believing that Muhammad ibn Ismail was in the occultation and would return to bring an age of justice, al Mahdi taught that the Imams had not been literally secluded, but rather had remained hidden to protect themselves and had been organizing the Da'i, and even acted as Da'i themselves. After raising an army and successfully defeating the Aglabids in North Africa and a number of other victories, al-Mahdi Billah successfully established a Shi'i political state ruled by the Imamate in 910. This was the only time in history where the Shia Imamate and Caliphate were united after the first Imam, Ali ibn Abi Talib. In parallel with the dynasty's claim of descent from Ali and Fatima, the empire was named Fatimid. 
However, this was not without controversy, and recognizing the extent that ism Ili doctrine had spread, the Abbasid Caliphate assigned Sunni and Twelver scholars the task to disprove the lineage of the new dynasty. This became known as the Baghdad Manifesto and it traces the lineage of the Fatimids to a Jewish blacksmith. The Middle East under Fatimid rule The Fatimid Caliphate expanded quickly under the subsequent Imams. Under the Fatimids, Egypt became the center of an empire that included at its peak North Africa, Sicily, Palestine, Syria, the Red Sea coast of Africa, Yemen, Hejaz and the Tihama. Under the Fatimids, Egypt flourished and developed an extensive trade network in both the Mediterranean Sea and the Indian Ocean, which eventually determined the economic course of Egypt during the High Middle Ages. The Fatimids promoted ideas that were radical for that time. One was promotion by merit rather than genealogy. Also during this period the three contemporary branches of Ismailism formed. The first branch Druze occurred with the Al-Hakim by Amr Allah. Born in 985, he ascended as ruler at the age of 11. A religious group that began forming in his lifetime broke off from mainstream Ismailism and refused to acknowledge his successor. Later to be known as the Druze, they believe Al-Hakim to be the manifestation of God and the prophesied Mahdi, who would one day return and bring justice to the world. The faith further split from Ismailism as it developed unique doctrines which often class it separately from both Ismailism and Islam. Arwa al-Salai was the Huja in Yemen from the time of Imam al-Mustansir. She appointed the Dai in Yemen to run religious affairs. Ismaili missionaries Ahmed and Abdullah in about 1067 CE 460 AH were also sent to India in that time. They sent Sayyidi Nuruddin to Dongan to look after southern part and Sayyidi Fakhruddin to East Rajasthan, India. The second split occurred following the death of al Mustansir Billah in 1094 CE. His rule was the longest of any caliph in both the Fatimid and other Islamic empires. After he died, his sons Nazar, the older, and al Mustai, the younger, fought for political and spiritual control of the dynasty. Nazar was defeated and jailed, but according to Nazari sources, his son escaped to Alamut, where the Iranian Ism Ili had accepted his claim. The Mustali line split again between the Tayyabi and the Hafizi, the former claiming that the 21st Imam and son of al Amir by Akamil Law went into occultation and appointed Ad al Mutlaq to guide the community, in a similar manner as the Ism Ili had lived after the death of Muhammad ibn Ismail. The latter claimed that the ruling Fatimid Caliph was the Imam. However, in the Mustali branch, the Dai came to have a similar but more important task. The term D al mitlak Arabic, al day al mulk literally means, the absolute or unrestricted missionary. This Dai was the only source of the Imam's knowledge after the occultation of al Qasim in Mustali thought. According to Tayyabi Ismaili tradition, after the death of Imam al Amir, his infant son, at Tayyab Abul Qasim, about two years old, was protected by the most important woman in Mustai history after the Prophet's daughter, Fatima. She was Arwa al Salai, a queen in Yemen. She was promoted to the post of Huja long before by Imam Mustansir at the death of her husband. She ran the Dawat from Yemen in the name of Imam Tayyab. She was instructed and prepared by Imam Mustansir and ran the Dawat from Yemen in the name of Imam Tayyab, following Imams for the second period of Satr. It was going to be on her hands, that Imam Tayyab would go into seclusion, and she would institute the office of the D. al mitlak Zob bin Musa was first to be instituted to this office. Dai continued in Yemen up to 24th Dai Yusuf who shifted Dawat to India. Before the shift of Dawat in India Day's representative were known as Wali ul Hind. Sayyidi Hassan Fir was one of the prominent Ismaili Wali of 14th century. The line of Tayyab Dais that began in 1132 is still continuing under the main sect known as Dawoodi Bora see list of Dai of Dawoodi Bora. The Mustali split several times over disputes regarding who was the rightful D. al mitlak the leader of the community within the occultation. After the 27th Dai, Siedna Dawood bin Qutb Shah, there was another split, the ones following Siedna Dawood came to be called Dawoodi Bora, and followers of Suleiman were then called Sulaimani. Dawoodi Bora's present Dai al mitlak the 53rd, is Siedna Mafadil Saifuddin, and he and his devout followers tread the same path, following the same tradition of the Amat Fatimiyin. The Sulaimani are mostly concentrated in Yemen and Saudi Arabia with some communities in the South Asia. 
The Dawoodi Bora and Alavi Bora are mostly exclusive to South Asia, after the migration of the Dawa from Yemen to India. Other groups include Atbai Malik and Hebias Bora. Mustali beliefs and practices, unlike those of the Nazari and Druze, are completely compatible with mainstream Islam, representing a continuation of Fatimid tradition and fiqh. Topic. Decline of the Caliphate In the 1040s, the Zurid dynasty governors of the Maghreb under the Fatimids declared their independence and their conversion to Sunni Islam, which led to the devastating Banu Halal invasions. After about 1070, the Fatimid hold on the Levant coast and parts of Syria was challenged by first Turkish invasions, then the First Crusade, so that Fatimid territory shrunk until it consisted only of Egypt. Damascus fell to the Seljuk Empire in 1076, leaving the Fatimids only in charge of Egypt and the Levantine coast up to Tyre and Sidon. Because of the vehement opposition to the Fatimids from the Seljuks, the Ismaili movement was only able to operate as a terrorist underground movement, much like the Assassins. After the decay of the Fatimid political system in the 1160s, the Zenjid ruler Nur ad Din, Atabeg of Aleppo, had his general, Saladin, seize Egypt in 1169, forming the Sunni Ayyubid dynasty. This signaled the end of the Hafizi Mustali branch of Ismailism as well as the Fatimid Caliphate. Topic: <laughs> Hassan i Saba Very early in the empire's life, the Fatimids sought to spread the ism Ili faith, which in turn would spread loyalty to the imamate in Egypt. One of their earliest attempts was taken by a missionary by the name of Hassan i Saba. Hassan i Saba was born into a Twelver family living in the scholarly Persian city of Qam in 1056 CE. His family later relocated to the city of Tehran, which was an area with an extremely active ism ili dawa. He immersed himself in ism ili thought, however, he did not choose to convert until he was overcome with an almost fatal illness and feared dying without knowing the imam of his time. Afterwards, Hassan i Saba became one of the most influential deists in Ism Ili history. He became important to the survival of the Nazari branch of Ismailism, which today is its largest branch. Legend holds that he met with Imam al Mustansir Billah and asked him who his successor would be, to which he responded that it would be his eldest son Nazar. Hassan i Saba continued his missionary activities, which climaxed with his taking of the famous citadel of Alamut. Over the next two years, he converted most of the surrounding villages to Ismailism. Afterwards, he converted most of the staff to Ismailism, took over the fortress, and presented Alamut's king with payment for his fortress, which he had no choice but to accept. The king reluctantly abdicated his throne, and Hassan i Saba turned Alamut into an outpost of Fatimid rule within Abbasid territory. The Hashishin, Assassin Surrounded by the Abbasids and other hostile powers and low in numbers, Hassan al Saba devised a way to attack the Ism Ili's enemies with minimal losses. Using the method of assassination, he ordered the murders of Sunni scholars and politicians who he felt threatened the Ism Ilis. Knives and daggers were used to kill, and sometimes as a warning, a knife would be placed on the pillow of a Sunni, who understood the message to mean that he was marked for death. When an assassination was actually carried out, the Hashishin would not be allowed to run away, instead, to strike further fear into the enemy, they would stand near the victim without showing any emotion and departed only when the body was discovered. This further increased the ruthless reputation of the Hashishin throughout Sunni controlled lands. The English word, assassination, is said to have been derived from the Arabic word Hashishin. It means both, those who use Hashish, and one of the Shiite Ismaili sects in the Syria of the 11th century. Topic. Threshold of the Imamate After the imprisonment of Nizar by his younger brother Ahmad al Mustali, various sources indicate that Nizar's son Ali al Hadi ibn Nizar, al Hadi survived and fled to Alamut. He was offered a safe place in Alamut, where Hassan al Saba welcomed him. However, it is believed this was not announced to the public and the lineage was hidden until a few Imams later, it was announced with the advent of Imam Hassan II. In a show of his imamate and to emphasize the interior meaning the baitan over the exterior meaning the zahir, Imam Hassan announced the Qiyama spiritual resurrection, the beginning of a new era in which the spiritual meaning of the religious law was revealed and practiced openly. 
He prayed with his back to Mecca, as did the rest of the congregation, who prayed behind him, and ordered the community to break their Ramadan fasting with a feast at noon. He made a speech saying that the Imam had brought his murids to the Qiyamah from the Sharia. Afterwards his descendants ruled as the Imams at Alamut until its destruction by the Mongols. Topic. Destruction by the Mongols Though it had successfully warded off Sunni attempts to take it several times, including one by Saladin, the stronghold at Alamut soon met its destruction. By 1206, Genghis Khan had managed to unite many of the once antagonistic Mongol tribes into a ruthless, but nonetheless unified, force. Using many new and unique military techniques, Genghis Khan led his Mongol hordes across Central Asia into the Middle East, where they won a series of tactical military victories using a scorched earth policy. A grandson of Genghis Khan, Hulagu Khan, led the devastating attack on Alamut in 1256, only a short time before sacking the Abbasid Caliphate in Baghdad in 1258. As he would later do to the House of Wisdom in Baghdad, he destroyed Ism Ili as well as Islamic religious texts. The imamate that was located in Alamut along with its few followers were forced to flee and take refuge elsewhere. Topic. Aftermath. After the fall of the Fatimid Caliphate and its bases in Iran and Syria, the three currently living branches of Ism Ili generally developed geographically isolated from each other, with the exception of Syria which has both Druze and, Nizari, and Pakistan and the rest of South Asia which had both Mustali and Nizari. The Mustali progressed mainly in Yemen and then shifted their Dawat to India under Dai, working on behalf of their last Imam, Tayyip, and were known as Bora. From India, various groups spread mainly to South Asia and eventually to the Middle East, Europe, Africa and America. The Nizari have maintained large populations in Syria, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, and they have smaller populations in China and Iran. This community is the only one with a living Imam, whose title is the Aga Khan. Badakhshan, which includes parts of northeastern Afghanistan and southeastern Tajikistan, is the only part of the world where Ismailis make up the majority of the population. The Druze mainly settled in Syria and Lebanon and developed a community based upon the principles of reincarnation through their own descendants. Their leadership is based on community scholars, who are the only individuals allowed to read their holy texts. There is controversy over whether this group falls under the classification of Ismailism or Islam because of its unique beliefs. The Tajiks of Xinjiang, being Ismaili, were not subjected to being enslaved in China by Sunni Muslim Turkic peoples because the two peoples did not share a common geographical region. The Barusho people of Pakistan are also Nizaris. However, due to their isolation from the rest of the world, Islam reached the Hunza about 350 years ago. Ismailism has been practiced by the Hunza for the last 300 years. The Hunza have been ruled by the same family of kings for over 900 years. They were called Kanjuts. Sunni Islam never took root in this part of Central Asia so even now, there are less than a few dozen Sunnis living among the Hunza. <laughs> Ismaili historiography One of the most important texts in Ismaili historiography is the Uyan al-Akbar, which is a reference source on the history of Ismailism that was composed in seven books by the Tayyabi Mistalian Ismaili Da'i scholar, Idris Imad al-Din born ca. 1392. This text presents the most comprehensive history of the Ismaili Imams and Dawah, from the earliest period of Muslim history until the late Fatimid era. The author, Idris Imad al-Din, descended from the prominent al-Walid family of the Quraysh in Yemen, who led the Tayyabi Mistalian Ismaili Dawa for more than three centuries. This gave him access to the literary heritage of the Ismailis, including the majority of the extant Fatimid manuscripts transferred to Yemen. The Uyan al-Akbar is being published in seven volumes of annotated Arabic critical editions as part of an institutional collaboration between the Institut Francais du Proche Orient in Damascus and the Institute of Ismaili Studies in London. This voluminous text has been critically edited based on several old manuscripts from the Institute of Ismaili Studies vast collection. 
These academic editions have been prepared by a team of Syrian and Egyptian scholars, including Dr. Ayman F. Said, and this major publication project has been coordinated by Dr. Nader El Bizri IIS and Dr. Sarab Atasi Kitab IFPO. Topic: <laughs> Beliefs. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> View on the Quran. Ism Illis believe the Quran was sent to Muhammad through the angel Gabriel Jibril in Arabic over the course of 23 years. They believe that the Imam has the authority to interpret the Quran in relation to the present time. The Jinnans and Qasidas The Jinnans are Nazari religious texts. They are written in the form of poetry by PIRs to interpret the meanings of Quranic ayat into the languages of South Asia, especially Gujarati and Urdu. In comparison to Jinnans, Ism Illis of other origins, such as Persians, Arabs, and Central Asians, have Qasidas Arabic, Qusit written by missionaries such as Nasir Khusra and Hassan bin Saba. Topic. Reincarnation Druze. Belief in reincarnation exists in the Druze faith, an offshoot of Ismailism. The Druze believe that members of their community can only be reincarnated within the community. It is also known that Druze believe in five cosmic principles, represented by the five-colored Druze star, intelligence, reason green, soul red, word yellow, precedent blue, and immanence white. These virtues take the shape of five different spirits which, until recently, have been continuously reincarnated on Earth as prophets and philosophers including Adam, the ancient Greek mathematician and astronomer Pythagoras, the ancient pharaoh of Egypt Akhenaten, and many others. The Druze believe that, in every time period, these five principles were personified in five different people who came down together to Earth to teach humans the true path to God and enlightenment, but that with them came five other individuals who would lead people away from the right path into darkness. Numerology <inaudible> 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 Ism Illis believe numbers have religious meanings. The number seven plays a general role in the theology of the Ismailia, including mystical speculations that there are seven heavens, seven continents, seven orifices in the skull, seven days in a week, and so forth. Imamate <inaudible> <inaudible> For this sect, the Imam is the manifestation of truth, and hence he is their path of salvation to God. Classical Ism Ili doctrine holds that divine revelation had been given in six periods door entrusted to six prophets, who they also call Natak speaker, who were commissioned to preach a religion of law to their respective communities. Whereas the Natak was concerned with the rites and outward shape of religion, the inner meaning is entrusted to a Wasi representative. The Wasi would know the secret meaning of all rites and rules and would reveal them to a small circles of initiates. The Natak and the Wasi are in turn succeeded by a line of seven Imams, who guard what they received. The seventh and last Imam in any period becomes the Natak of the next period. The last Imam of the sixth period, however, would not bring about a new religion of law but rather supersede all previous religions, abrogate the law, and introduce Din Adama al Awal, the original religion of Adam practiced by Adam and the angels in paradise before the fall, which would be without ritual or law but consist merely in all creatures praising the Creator and recognizing His unity. This final stage was called the Kiyama. <laughs> Pir and Dawa Just as the Imam is seen by Ismailis as the manifestation of the first created light, during the period between the Imamates of Muhammad ibn Ismail and al Mahdi Billah, the relationship between the teacher and the student became a sacred one, and the Dai became a position much beyond a normal missionary. The Dai passed on the sacred and hidden knowledge of the Imam to the student, who could then use that information to ascend to higher levels. First, the student loved the Dai, and from the Dai he learned to love the Imam, who was but an interceder on behalf of God. In Nazari Ismailism, the head die is called the PIR. The Imam is the PIR in Nazari Ismailism. Zahir In Ismailism, things have an exterior meaning, what is apparent. This is called Zahir. Baitan 
In Ismailism, things have an interior meaning that is reserved for a special few who are in tune with the Imam, or the Imam himself. This is called Topic: AQL As with other Shia, Ism Illis believe that the understanding of God is derived from the first light in the universe, the light of AQL, which in Arabic roughly translates as intellect or to bind Latin, intellectus. It is through this universal intellect aql al -kul, that all living and non-living entities know God, and all of humanity is dependent and united in this light. Contrastingly, in Twelver thought this includes the prophets as well, especially Muhammad, who is the greatest of all the manifestations of aql. God, in Ismaili metaphysics, is seen as above and beyond all conceptions, names, and descriptions. He transcends all positive and negative qualities, and knowledge of God is such as above all human comprehension. Read more at, Ismaili Musim teachings on Tawhid from primary sources. For the Shia, the light nur of the Imamate is the universal intellect, and consequently, the Imam on earth is the focus of manifestation of the intellect. Dasand Zakat The Ismailis have submitted the Quranic zakat, see Quran 9 which is a purification due and not charitable alms, to the Imams since the death of the Prophet Muhammad. The zakat rates historically differed depending on the asset type 2.5% of animals, 5% of minerals, and 10% of crops. Among Koja Ismailis, the zakat is 12.5% of cash income and among other Ismailis of Iran, Syria, Central Asia, and China, the zakat is 10% of cash income and other percent s of non-cash assets like crops and livestock. The entire zakat amount is given to the Ismaili Imam through his representatives in the Jamatkhanas, called Muki Sahibs. The zakat Dasan funds are used exclusively for the benefit of the community, and for the expenses the office of the Imamid incurs in this work. And even though the Imam has a right to a portion of those funds, personally, in fact the reverse happens and the Imam supplements Imamate funds from his personal resources, sometimes by an additional 150%. This has been documented in several interviews of the present Aga Khan. Wilaya Wilaya is translated from Arabic as guardianship and denotes love and devotion for God, the Prophets, the Aimat and Imam Uz Zaman, and the Dai. It also denotes ta'at following every order without protest, but with one's soul's happiness, knowing that nothing is more important than a command from God and that the command of his vicegerents is his word. In Ism Ili doctrine, God is the true desire of every soul, and he manifests himself in the forms of prophets and imams. To be guided to his path, one requires a messenger or a guide, a dai. For the true mawali of the imam and dai, heaven is made obligatory. And only with this crucial wilayat, they believe, will all the other pillars and acts ordained by Islam be judged or even looked at by God. Topic. Tahara or Shahada Topic. Tahara A pillar which translates from Arabic as purity. As well as a pure soul, it includes bodily purity and cleanliness. Without taharat of the body, clothes and masala, salat will not be accepted. Topic. Shahada In place of tahara, the Druze have the shahada, or affirmation of faith. Topic. Salat Topic. Zakat A pillar which translates as charity, with the exception of the Druze sect, the ism illis form of zakat resembles the zakat of other Muslims. Along with zakat, the Twelvers also pay kums, which is one-fifth of one's unspent money at the end of the year. Ism illis pay a tithe of twelve. 5%, which is used for development projects in the Eastern world, primarily to benefit Ism Illis and, by extension, other communities living in that area. Topic. Psalm A pillar which is translated as fasting, Sunni and Shiite Muslims fast by abstaining from food, drink from dawn to sunset as well purifying the soul by avoiding sinful acts and doing good deeds, e.g., not lying, being honest in daily life, not backbiting, etc., for 30 days during the holy month of Ramadan ninth month of the Islamic calendar. 
In contrast, the Nizari and Masta'ali sects believe in a metaphorical as well as a literal meaning of fasting. The literal meaning is that one must fast as an obligation, such as during Ramadan, and the metaphorical meaning is seeking to attain the divine truth and striving to avoid worldly activities which may detract from this goal. In particular, Ism Illis believe that the esoteric meaning of fasting involves a fasting of the soul, whereby they attempt to purify the soul simply by avoiding sinful acts and doing good deeds. Still, many Nazari Ismailis around the world fast during the month of Ramadan every year. In addition, the Nazari also fast on Shukravari Bij, which falls on a Friday that coincides with the new moon. Topic. Hajj A pillar which translates from Arabic as pilgrimage, meaning the pilgrimage to Mecca, Saudi Arabia. It is currently the largest annual pilgrimage in the world and is the fifth pillar of Islam, a religious duty that must be carried out at least once in one's lifetime by every able-bodied Muslim who can afford to do so. Many Ismaili sects do not ascribe to mainstream Islamic beliefs regarding the Hajj, considering it instead to metaphorically mean visiting the Imam himself, that being the greatest and most spiritual of all pilgrimages. However, since the Druze do not follow Sharia, they do not believe in a literal pilgrimage to the Kaaba in Mecca as other Muslims do, while the Mustali Boris as well as the Nazaris still hold on to the literal meaning as well, performing Hajj to the Kaaba and also visiting the Imam or in a secluded time like today, the Dai, who is the representative or vicegerent of the Imam to be hajj e hakiki <laughs> Jihad an Islamic term, jihad is a religious duty of Muslims. In Arabic, the word jihad is a noun meaning, struggle. Jihad appears frequently in the Quran and is sometimes used in the non-military sense. A person engaged in jihad is called a mujahid, the plural is mujahideen. When a violent act is intended, the Quran used the term, cattle, meaning to engage in killing, violence. A minority among the Sunni scholars sometimes refer to this duty as the sixth pillar of Islam, though it occupies no such official status. In Twelver Shia Islam, however, jihad is one of the ten practices of the religion. For the Ismilis, jihad is the last of the seven Islamic pillars, and for them it means a struggle against one's own soul, striving toward rightness, and sometimes a struggle in warfare. However, Ismilis will stress that none but their Imam Uz Zaman Imam of the time can declare war and call his followers to fight. Topic. Branches Topic. Nizari The largest part of the Ism Ili community, Qasim Shahi Nazari today accepts Prince Karim Aga Khan IV as their 49th Imam, who they claim is descended from Muhammad through his daughter Fatima Az Zara and Ali, Muhammad's cousin and son in law. The 46th Ism Ili Imam, Aga Hassan Ali Shah, fled Iran in the 1840s after being blamed for a failed coup against the Shah of the Qajar dynasty. Aga Hassan Ali Shah settled in Mumbai in 1848. Topic. Muhammad Shahi Nazari, Mumini There is the offshoot of the Muhammad Shahi Nazari Ismailis who follow the elder son of Shamsa D. Din Muhammad, the 28th Qasim Shahi Imam, named Allah Ad Din Mumin Shah 26th Imam of the Muhammad Shahi Nazari Ismailis. They follow this line of Imams until the disappearance of the 40th Imam Amir Muhammad al-Bakir in 1796. There are followers of this line of Nazari Imams in Syria today, locally called the Jafariya. <inaudible> Masta'ali In time, the seat for one chain of the Dai was split between India and Yemen as the community split several times, each recognizing a different Dai. Today, the Dawoodi Boras, which constitute the majority of the Mustali Ism Ili, accept Mafadal Saifuddin as the 53rd D al Mutlaq. The Dawoodi Boras are based in India, along with the Alavi Bora. Minority groups of the Sulaimani, however, exist in Yemen and Saudi Arabia. In recent years, there has been a rapprochement between the Sulaimani, Dawoodi and Alavi Mustali subsects. The Mustali sects are the most traditional of the three main groups of Ism Ili, maintaining rituals such as prayer and fasting more consistently with the practices of other Shi'i sects. 
It is often said that they resemble Sunni Islam even more than Twelvers do, though this would hold true for matters of the exterior rituals Zahir only, with little bearing on doctrinal or theological differences. Dawoodi Bora The Dawoodi Boras are a very close-knit community who seek advice from the Dai on spiritual and temporal matters. Dawoodi Boras is headed by the D. Al Mitlak, who is appointed by his predecessor in office. The D. Al Mitlak appoints two others to the subsidiary ranks of Mazan Arabic Ma Dun Madwin, licentiate, and Makassar Arabic. These positions are followed by the rank of Rasul Hudud, Baisaheb, Mia Saheb, Sheikh Saheb, and Mullah Saheb, which are held by several of Boras. The Amil or Sahib e Raza, who is granted the permission to perform the religious ceremonies of the believers by the D. Al Mitlak and also leads the local congregation in religious, social, and community affairs, is sent to each town where a sizable population of believers exists. Such towns normally have a masjid commonly known as mosque and an adjoining jama'at khana assembly hall where socio-religious functions are held. The local organizations which manage these properties and administer the social and religious activities of the local boras report directly to the central administration of the D. Al Mitlak. While the majority of Dawoodi boras have traditionally been traders, it is becoming increasingly common for them to become professionals. Some choose to become doctors, consultants or analysts as well as a large contingent of medical professionals. Dawoodi Boras are encouraged to educate themselves in both religious and secular knowledge, and as a result, the number of professionals in the community is rapidly increasing. Dawoodi Boras believe that the education of women is equally important as that of men, and many Dawoodi Bora women choose to enter the workforce. Al Jamia Tu Safiya the Arabic Academy in Surat, Nairobi and Karachi is assigned to the educational importance in the Dawoodi community. The academy has an advanced curriculum which encompasses religious and secular education for both men and women. Today there are approximately one million Dawoodi Bora. The majority of these reside in India and Pakistan, but there is also a significant diaspora residing in the Middle East, East Africa, Europe, North America and the Far East. The ordinary Bora is highly conscious of his identity, and this is especially demonstrated at religious and traditional occasions by the appearance and attire of the participants. Dawoodi Bora men wear a traditional white three-piece outfit, plus a white and gold cap, called a topi, and women wear the rida, a distinctive form of the commonly known burqa which is distinguished from other forms of the veil due to it often being in color and decorated with patterns and lace. The rida's difference from the burqa, however, is significant beyond just the color, pattern and lace. The rida does not call for covering of women's faces like the traditional veil. It has a flap called the party that usually hangs on the back like the hood of a jacket but it is not used to conceal the face. This is representative of the Dawoodi Bora community's values of equality and justice for women, which they believe, is a tenet of the Fatimid imamate's evolved understanding of Islam and the true meaning of women's chastity in Islam. The Dawoodi Bora community also do not prevent their women from coming to mosques, attending religious gatherings or going to places of pilgrimage. It is often regarded as the most peaceful sect of Islam and an example of true Sufism. It has been critically acclaimed on several occasions even by Western governments such as those of the United Kingdom, Germany, Sweden and particularly the United States for its progressive outlook towards gender roles, adoption of technology, promotion of literature, crafts, business and secular values. However, the Dawoodi Boras are highly single-minded about inter-caste or inter-faith marriage. They do not oppose it but do not encourage it either. If a Dawoodi Bora member does marry into another caste or religion, he or she is usually advised to ask his or her spouse to convert to Islam and, specifically, into the community. They believe that straying away from the community implies straying away from Ma'ad, the ultimate objective of this life and the meaning of the teachings of Islam, which is to return to where all souls comes from and reunite with Allah. Besides, converting someone to Islam has high spiritual and religious significance as doctrines espouse that making someone a Muslim or Mu'min confers the sawab reward of good deeds equivalent to that of 40 hajjs and 40 umrahs visiting Mecca and the Kaaba during days other than that of Hajj. The position of Da'i al-Mitlak is currently disputed after the demise of the 52nd Da'i al-Mitlak of the Dawoodi Bora community, Muhammad Burhanuddin. 
Two claimants emerged for the position of 53rd Dai al Mutlaq, Mafadil Saifuddin and Kuzima Kutbuddin, and a case is pending in the Bombay High Court to resolve the matter. Kutbuddin has since died and appointed his son Tahir Fakhruddin as his successor. Besides speaking the local languages, the Dawudis have their own language called Lisanu l d wat tongue of the d wat. This is written in the Persian alphabet but is derived from Urdu, Gujarati and Arabic and Persian. Topic: <inaudible> Sulaimani. Founded in 1592, the Sulaimani are mostly concentrated in Yemen but are also found in Pakistan and India. The denomination is named after its 27th Da, Sulayman bin Hassan. They are referred and prefer to be referred as Ahil Haq as Milis and Sulaymanis and not with the Bora suffix. The total number of Sulaymanis currently are around 300,000, mainly living in the eastern district of Jabal Haras in northwest Yemen and in Najran, Saudi Arabia. Beside the Banu Yam of Najran, the Sulaymanis are in Haras, among the inhabitants of the Jabal Magariba and in Hazan, Lahab and Atara, as well as in the district of Hamadan and in the vicinity of Yaram. In India there are between 3,000 and 5,000 Sulaymanis living mainly in Vadodara, Hyderabad, Mumbai and Surat. In Punjab, Pakistan, there is a well-established Sulaymani community in Sindh. Some 10,000 Sulaymanis live in rural areas of Punjab known to the Sulaymani as Jazira e Sindh. These Sulaymani communities have been in the Jazira e Sindh from the time of Fatimid Imam Caliph al Mu'iz li din Allah when he sent his da'as to Jazira e Sindh. There are also some 900 1,000 Sulaymanis mainly from South Asia scattered around the world, in the Persian Gulf states, United States, Canada, Thailand, Australia, Japan, and the United Kingdom. Alavi Bora The Alavi Boras, popularly and incorrectly known as Aliyah Boras, follow a different line of succession of Dwat missionaries from the 29th Da'i onwards after the split from Dayudi Boras in Ahmedabad in 1621 CE. They believe the rightful Da'i was a grandson of the 28th Da'i named Ali Shams al Din b. Ibrahim d. 1046 a. 1637 CE. They are named after this Ali, calling themselves Alavis, and their mission ad Dawid al Hadiyat al Alvia. Three Da'is later, in 1110 a. 1699 CE, the seat of the Alavi Dawit was moved from Ahmedabad to Vadodara by 32nd Da'i, acting on the will of 31st Da'i, except for a brief interlude in Surat for 20 years 1158 to 1178 a. 1745 to 1764 CE. Since then Vidodara remains the headquarters of the Alavis to this day. The Alavi Boras have a library of 450 Ismaili manuscripts, some up to 500 years old, at their center in Vidodara. Currently, Alavi Boras are a close-knit organized community numbering approximately 8,000, with the majority of them settled in Vidodara, where they have their own locality. They have their own masjids and musafirkhanas in places like Mumbai, Surat, Ahmedabad, Nadiad in India. Some have migrated to the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, UAE and Europe. Like majority of Bora communities, Alavi Boras are mostly traders and dominate the optical and furniture market in Vidodara. They are now increasingly venturing into professions such as law, medicine, engineering, business management, computer sciences. Beings as Mili Tayyibis they follow strictly Fatimid spiritual hierarchical setup, law, dress code, customs, beliefs, eating hadiths, lifestyle, ethics and customary traditions etc. While lesser known and smallest in number, Alavi Boras have their spiritual and temporal head as the 45th D. Al-Mitlak, Hatam Zakiuddin. The doctrines of Alavi Boras is centered in the recognition of Imam. It continues to be the most important foundation among Boras. In fact, Dai al mitlak acts as a direct representative of the concealed imam as he receives required guidance from him. During this time of the concealment of 21st Fatimid imam at Tayyib and his progeny, the religious hierarchy of the Alavi Boras is headed by the D. al mitlak who is appointed by his predecessor in office and similar as of Dawoodi Bora. Hebias <laughs> Bora The Hebias Bora are a branch of Mustali Ismaili Shia Islam that broke off from the mainstream Dawoodi Bora after the death of the 39th Da'i al mitlak in 1754. 
ATBA I Malik The ATBA I Malik Jamaat community are a branch of Mustali Ismaili Shia Islam that broke off from the mainstream Dawoodi Bora after the death of the 46th Dai al Mutlaq, under the leadership of Abdul Hussein Javaji. They have further split into two more branches, the ATBA I Malik Badar and ATBA I Malik Vakil. Progressive Dawoodi Bora The Progressive Dawoodi Bora is a reformist sect within Mustai Ismaili Shia Islam that broke off circa 1977. They disagree with mainstream Dawoodi Bora, as led by the Da'i al Mutlaq, on doctrinal, economic, and social issues. Offshoots Druze While on one view there is a historical nexus between the Druze and Ism Illis, any such links are purely historical and do not entail any modern similarities, given that one of the Druze's central tenets is transmigration of the soul reincarnation, as well as other contrasting beliefs with Ismailism and Islam. Druze is an offshoot of Ismailism. Many historical links do trace back to Syria and particularly Masayaf. Satpanth Satpanth is a subgroup of Nazari Ismailism and Ismaili Sufism formed by conversions from Hinduism 700 years ago by Pir Siddhartan and 600 years ago in the 15th century by his grandson Pir Imam Shah .They differ slightly from the Nazari Kojas in that they reject the Aga Khan as their leader and are known more commonly as Imam Shahi. There are villages in Gujarat which are totally Sapanthi such as Purana near Ahmedabad where Imam Shah is buried. It is also the older form of Nazari Ismaili practice originating from the Kutch community of Gujarat. Pir Siddhartan gave the first converts to Ismailism the name Satpanth because they were the followers of the true path, they were then given the title of Koja to replace their title of Thakur. <laughs> Extinct branches Bishermeni According to the historian Yaqat al-Hamawi, the Bishermeni Ismailita or Ismaili, Nizari denomination of the Muslims who lived in the Kingdom of Hungary in the 10–13th centuries, were employed as mercenaries by the kings of Hungary. However following the establishment of the Christian Kingdom of Hungary their community was Christianized by the end of the 13th century. Hafizi This branch held that whoever the political ruler caliph of the Fatimid Caliphate was, was also the Imam of the time. After the reign of al Amir, al Hafiz was recognized as the Imam of the time as well as his descendants. The Hafizi Ismaili sect had 26 Imams. The Hafizi sect lived on into the 14th century AD with adherents in northern Egypt and Syria but had died out by the 15th century AD. Seveners A branch of the Ism Ili known as the Sabaya seveners", hold that Ism Il son, Muhammad ibn Ismail, was the seventh and final Ism Ili Imam, who is said to be in the occultation. However, most scholars believe this group is either extremely small or non existent today. The Karamita were the most active branch of the seveners. Inclusion in Amman message and Islamic Ummah The Amman message, which was issued on 9 November 2004 by King Abdullah II bin al-Husayn of Jordan, called for tolerance and unity in the Muslim world. Subsequently, the Amman message Conference took place in Amman, Jordan on 4–6 July 2005 and a three-point declaration was issued by 200 Muslim academics from over 50 countries focusing on the three issues of Defining who is a Muslim Excommunication from Islam and 
principles related to delivering religious edicts fatawa, the three-point declaration later known as the three points of the Amman message included both the Jafari and Zaydi Shia Madahib schools of jurisprudence among the eight schools of jurisprudence that were listed as being in the Muslim fold and whose adherents were therefore to be considered as Muslim by definition and therefore cannot be excluded from the world community of Muslims. The Aga Khan, the 49th Imam of the Ismailis, was invited to issue a religious edict for and on behalf of the Ismailis, which he did by a letter explicitly stating that the Ismailis adhered to the Jafari school as well as other schools of close affinity including the Sufi principles concerned with personal search for God. The summarization by Prince Ghazi bin Muhammad explicitly delineates on page 11 the place of the Ismailis as being within the Jafari school as stated by the Aga Khan. Ismailism amongst Shia Islam The Shia belief throughout its history split over the issue of the imamate. The largest branch are the Twelvers, followed by the Zaydi and Ismaili and Qaysanite. All the groups follow a different line of imamate linked together as shown in chart below. File, imam chart .pdf. Topic. Ismailis in the Internet era With the advent of new technologies and way of communications, the office of Ismaili Imamat has made necessary use of the Internet and social media in order to keep Ismailis referred to as Jamat across the globe updated about new happenings related to the Imam. On April 17, 2016, the Aga Khan Foundation AKF was successfully delegated, Ismaili TLD. Saudi Arabia argued to ICANN for rejection of, Ismaili TLD among 31 other TLDs. The application was rejected by ICANN. Topic. Ismaili Following the delegation of, Ismaili TLD, the official website of Ismaili Muslim community was moved from thaismaili.org to the .ismaili. The website publishes regular news, event updates, articles and hosts live videos. Topic. The dot Ismaili on social media The office of Ismaili Imamat maintains official presence across five social media networks including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and YouTube. All of the profiles are verified through relevant official authorities. The Ismaili magazine The offices of Ismaili Imamat in various countries publish a monthly magazine under the name of the Ismaili followed by the country name. For example, the Ismaili Pakistan. Topic. See also Fatimid Caliphate Banu Yam Bishermeni Brethren of Purity Gulat Husay Koja List of extinct Shia sects Nasir Khusra References Bibliography External links Official website Aga Khan Development Network Encyclopedia Iranica, Isma Ilism Institute of Ismaili Studies The Ismaili on Twitter The Ismaili on Facebook The Ismaili on Instagram The Ismaili on Snapchat The Ismaili on YouTube